and welcome to The Life. I'm your host, Kelsey Nicole Nelson, joined by a man who really needs no introduction. He is none other than Fred Smoot. And of course, on this show, we will go into the players' lives off of the football field and get to know them on more of a personal level. So to kick things off, Fred, how are you feeling? I am feeling great. My, my personal chi is yeah. feeling good, but my NFL chi is kind of off right now because we're kind of off right now. <laughs> That's a good way to put it in front of our first show together. I'm excited for it. Hey, I'm excited. You see these smiles? They're they, they going to make everybody smile in the DMV. They are authentic smiles. And let's get into it, Fred. I'm so excited. So for this week, I had a chance to sit down with defensive lineman Tim Settle for an interview to talk about his life off the football field. Fred, yeah. a new addition to the family, yeah. new baby, yeah, yeah. which is common in Washington now. Mm-hmm. But, and, and, but people don't understand at yeah. home how a new baby affects a player. Mm, because he okay. still has to stay up all night right. with the baby, too, right. with the mom. Then he has to get up, go to work, yeah. still have to battle through. It. It's harder than people think, <laughs> and you'll love to know my nickname for Tim Settles. All right, go ahead and tell us, Fred, because I'm curious. Booger Settles. See, you all, you ain't got a D lineman unless somebody named Booger on their <laughs> defensive line, and we got Tim Booger Settles. I like that, and also, <laughs> in addition to his family, he has a new clothing line, and all of right. course, we also talked about his hobbies off the football field. All so right. let's check out the interview. All right. <laughs> All right, so Tim, thank you so much for joining me. To get to know you off the football field, tell us what type of things you like to do off the football field. What are your hobbies? Um, I like to play the video game a lot. Uh, just recently had a baby, baby Tim. Uh, I've been enjoying every, every moment I can with him. You know, just enjoying the family. You know, uh, just and including that, just just trying to, uh, when I'm at home, I just, I just be worried, I be at home. I, I don't be worried about football when I'm here. When I'm at, when I'm at the facility, it's all football. When I'm at home, it's all home. I don't do nothing, I don't do a lot of crazy stuff. Well, congrats on the baby. I saw the amazing video that you had, the hip hop Harry theme, which is for us 90s baby. <laughs> how did you get your, how did you, how did you get your um, wife to do that? <laughs> yeah, I think about it. We was in, uh, she was in labor for like, 27 hours, so we was, just trying to find something to do, you know, I had to make it a little fun. So we was on TikTok and she was like, let's do a video. And that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. You gave us all life. And I know you said at home, you said, you know, you, you leave football off the field. Any favorite video games that you like to do at home or play? I'm uh, playing 2K and a little bit of Call of Duty, but uh, my, my plan, my game plan has been really limited since baby time's been around. And also outside of having a baby, you have a clothing line, right? St. Echelon. So tell us all about that. How did you get started in fashion? Well, um, I, I always looked into it as I wanted to have a clothing brand, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. So, you know, I now with a couple of my friends, we came up with an idea. And, that's what it was, you know, it also describes somebody uh, highly, re- highly respected in the community. That's the whole meaning about it. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, we, we keep on increasing from there. And, you know, it's doing really good right now. You know, we're still uh, still getting things going. And, you know, it takes time to, uh, to do with a, everything with a clothing brand. So it's, it's, it's doing things, everything's doing, doing good in, in the process. So I'm excited about that. It takes time, but you're doing it. So, of course, I'm wondering, are you giving your teammates any fashion tips? Um, No, not yet. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, it's, it's better when we have fans, but it's kind of hard to be fashionable when you don't really have that many fans. But, because I, 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 I was going to show off a, a lot of swag this year, but it's kind of hard. I say, don't deprive us. We still want to see it on game days. We still get to see you guys hopping on the plane, hopping off the plane. <laughs> Tim, bring it to us. Yeah, I'll just be, I'm, I'm going to have something for everybody. It's going to be something worth watching and worth looking at. I'm going to have a picture for everybody. So stay tuned. <laughs> Super exciting. Um, and this is, I'm going to throw a hardball at you. Um, if you weren't an NFL player, I know that's probably hard for you to think about, but what career would you choose outside of football? Uh, I would have. I would have went the real estate route. I always wanted to get into real estate, you know, own apartment complexes and houses. That probably would have took way longer, but that was my goal before football. So. Nice. And then I'm going to take you the pregame playlist. Tell us the first three songs. Uh, first three songs. I got to listen to Lil Baby, uh, Freestyle. Um, I like Gucci Man. Uh, one of his songs, Big Boy Diamonds with Kodak. And then, uh, I don't know. This I, that was my first two songs, and then I, I just I let it go from there. I let my mind settle from there. So. And just going off of that, do you enjoy traveling? And if so, what's your favorite travel destination? Um, I like Aruba. Aruba is uh, 
But in in I like I like Aruba. That's that's where I'm going every year. That's my that's my spot. It's it's very tucked away. It's very nice. It's a very uh, like for travelers. It's a highly visited area, and you you got to go to be able to experience it because you'll go back every year too. Yeah, one day when we get paychecks like you, Tim, we will all go to Aruba. Basically, that's what it is. <laughs> and now, are you a car guy? And what type of car do you drive? I drive a S550. Uh, I got a Mercedes Benz. I keep it real simple and classy. Not nothing too flashy. I like that. Humble, humble beginnings, right? And if I asked your parents to describe you, what would they say about you? Uh, definitely hilarious. Definitely a funny, uh, loving. But I'm I'm definitely the funny guy. I make everybody laugh from my family to my teammates. So I'm can I put right. you on the spot? Can you tell us a uh, joke? Can you tell us a joke? Can I put you on the spot? <laughs> joke. Uh, man, that's kind of hard. It's, I, I don't. I, I'm just the funny guy. I don't be joking like that. I don't. I, don't, I can't come off with no jokes off the top. I, I don't know nothing to tell you. How about next time you're on the show, you bring us a joke. We won't put the pressure on you. <laughs> The next time I'm, I'm on the show, so I can. I love, we, we like to hear that, Tim. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Special thanks to Tim Settle for joining me for a very fun interview. Fred, the biggest thing I took away from that interview, 27 hours of labor. I don't know how women do it. Like, <laughs> kudos to women. 27 hours? I don't know if I could just simply stand for 28 hours. I mean, 27 hours. Yeah. Going through labor? Yet alone. All props. All <laughs> props to the women. I see why there. I have no kids yet. Uh, in 27 right. hours, look, we might not have any friends. And then also just hearing him, he's a funny guy. No, listen, I know Tim personally. Yeah. Tim, uh, like, I dog sit for Tim. Uh -huh. my, my kids and him are actually cousins, so they love to bring his dog by. <laughs> and of course, he owes me a cleaning debt Ooh. right now because his dog, which is very cute, <laughs> left, a surprise for me. left a surprise for me in the living room. <laughs> It's nothing like coming home to a surprise. And he's a video game guy. Video game guy. He yeah. likes 2K. You play 2K? 2K? I'm, I'm more of a, I'm more of a NFL guy. I love to play the game I play, but I like to do it more of a GM mode. Okay. Like I like to go career mode. So I play like 10, 15, 20 years, get to watch the players grow. I like that. And, and I think <laughs> that's 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 what capitalized when it comes to sports guys. You got to, you get to play another position at the job. So right. GM is what I like to do when I play all video right. games. GM Fred Smooth. I like that title, Fred. <laughs> Listen to me. It all rolls off the tongue. <laughs> We're speaking it into existence, and then Tim also touched on his fashion taste. Yes. You obviously have great fashion taste. Uh, I, for some reason, our athletes think we're great at fashion, because <laughs> even I, when I was young, yeah. wanted to start a fashion line, okay. and mine was named Peoples. Oh, and what God. I was going to do with the Peoples line was, whatever people naturally give off, I was going to make that. So oh. I was going to have the, the pot belly tank tops, because people got pot tops. bellies. <laughs> All right? Like the bow leg jeans, you know, stuff, stuff like that. The slew foot shoes, stuff like that. So every athlete loves fashion because you get to independently be yourself and express yeah. yourself through fashion. I like that. Get to express yourself through fashion. This is why people are going to have to check out the fit, Fred, because we're going to be talking a lot about their fashions. Any players that you think stand out in the fashion sense? I'm just curious. Well, of course, Russell Westbrook. All right, he's a fashion pioneer. Cam Newton. Now, I don't agree with his fashion most of the time, <laughs> but fashion is being brave enough to wear different. what other people yeah. won't wear. And Cam, the last thing he did with the hat, with the dreads coming out, really loved it. <laughs> I, Cam is unique, right? It's different. I like it, it's it. something that we can all get behind. So Tim, just so many incredible things. But again, and he said he's bringing me a joke next time. So we're gonna hold him to that. You put too much pressure on. Him. See, you can't. <laughs> see, you can't. I tell people all the time because I'm known as a funny guy. You can't put you put me on the spot and say, "Ha, make me laugh." I won't do it then. It's too much pressure. That's what makes Chris Rock so good at what he does. Very, very. So you know, I respect him in saying, you know what, I ain't got nothing for you right now. But I'll come back to you after I watch DL Hughley or somebody. I like that, friend. This why we have good energy on the show. And you need good energy. Good chi <laughs> is what I call it. Good chi. All right. Well, good chi. We're going to go to some questions. See if you bring that same energy. Friend. All right. Trippy about you. So I hope right. you know yourself very well, Fred. Uh, just a tad. Just a tad bit. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. First question, Fred. Mississippi State appeared in three bowl games. All right. While you attended college. So we're taking it back. Can you name the three bowls? Or at least give me one, Fred. The Cotton Bowl. Okay. The Peach Bowl. Two for two. One more. And the... Uh, Texas AMM in the snow, Louisiana, uh, Campbell Soup Bowl. I'm just chilling. It ain't the Campbell Soup Bowl. It was the, uh, it wasn't the Liberty Bowl either. What it's was close. it? It's close. Liberty, what goes with Liberty? Freedom, another word. Harry Tut? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not what, you, what are you talking about? What Independence was? Bowl. Uh, all right, all right. Listen to me. 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 List
to me. You should have just said Washington, D.C., independent. <laughs> I, I gave you three of them. <laughs> hey, you know what? You, you get the worst clues of all time. <laughs> if this was Price is Right, you'll be, you'll be terrible as Bob Bob. <laughs> okay. I have no clue what to say after the Harry Tubman call, <laughs> but we're going to go to the next question. You were selected with the 45th overall pick by Washington yes. in the 2001 NFL Draft. Mm -hmm. Who was drafted with the 44th overall pick? Ken Lucas. Uh-uh. Wrong. Chris? Think of the Kardashians. Last name kind of close to it. Mm. Close to Kardashian. If they're not the Kardashians, what's the other family? The J Jenners. So something with the J. Chris. Chris Jenkins. There we go. And he's a former Turf by the yes, Carolina Panthers. Yes, he is. Panthers. Carolina Panthers. Yes, so we yes. had to give the Turf shout out. Mm -hmm. Shout out to UMD. All right. And uh, Drew Brees was the, yeah. the first pick in the second round of that draft that there I was in. Yeah, yeah. See, Fred, the, the memory is still strong uh, as ever. CT ain't got me yet. <laughs> Which we're glad about. All right, question number three. You were an All-American your mm -hmm. senior year at Mississippi State in mm -hmm. 2000. Mm -hmm. Can you name another? Another guy that was all American. Santana Moss was all American. Yes, have to name uh, one uh, Drew Brees was all American. Uh, Michael Vick was all American. Uh, Reggie Wayne was all American. Just Steve Smith was all American. Uh, literally, we had some of the best. Ladanian Thomason was all American. Uh -huh. Big Leonard Williams was all American. Uh, I can keep naming these guys, and I can keep going We've in my got draft. Time for <laughs> All right, those were all great. And the only one I think you missed was Andre Carter. Uh, well, Dre Carter was my teammate. Shout yeah. out to Dre Carter. He was five-time Dead Man Suit Award winner in our locker room. That's an award that we give to the person that just has no fashion sense and look like they dug somebody out the ground, stole their suit, and wore it to the game. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, definitely an award no one wants to get, so right. I'm sorry to him. All right, we're going to go to the next one, Fred. Do you remember your first NFL game? Who did you play? I played against the San Diego Chargers. I played against Doug Flutie. I ended up being player of the week in NFL, interception, eight tackles, forced, I mean, a fumble recovery. I was fresh to death. Let me, I wish I had a collar so the I could pop. pop it. I got one for you. I'll <laughs> pop it for you. <laughs> I like that. You know, no humbleness there. You brag. No, 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 no. But you're facts. Game. My grandma always said, you don't have to be humble when you're giving facts. <laughs> Just telling the truth. I like that. Yes, Fred, you had a very wonderful game. And a bonus question for you. Uh, do you know the opponent of your last ever NFL game? San Diego Chargers. Yeah, <laughs> listen, they brought me in and they kicked me out. <laughs> I'm fine. And, and, and you know, I said San Diego, not LA. Right. Because they weren't in LA right. at the time. So I do remember. So don't come for his mentions. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> All right, Fred, you finished your career with 21 interceptions. Mm. Which team did you intercept the most during your career? Green Bay. Yes, Green Bay. So yes, because me and Favre had this thing. Bus Cook is our agent. We both from Mississippi. Yep. And in the offseason, we used to get together and just talk trash, talk <laughs> trash. And I used to be like, I just need you to play 20 more years so I can play 20 more years because you always throw me interceptions, Brett. That's what Brett does. He keeps me playing in the NFL. He retired. I got kicked out the league. Oh, my gosh. Well, on that note, look, <laughs> we're going to head back to the Tim Settle interview for this What Drives You presented by Nissan Second. And then I want to drive off of that. What what drives you, Tim? What motivates you? What pursues you in your passions? Just uh, being able to carry on my legacy and my family. Just being able to uh, be a part of a historic game, you know, and just being able to just be somebody that's talked about, you know, uh, be relevant. DC has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. DC's greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94-7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. A moment of joy. A source of inspiration. An act of kindness. An old friend. A new beginning. Some welcome relief or a cause for celebration. What's inside? <laughs> Possibilities. What we deliver by delivering. COVID changed everything. More demands on students, parents, educators. But there was a $4 billion education shortfall in Maryland even before COVID. We have a lot to do for our kids. Close the digital divide, provide opportunities to pursue vocational and technical education, and hire more qualified teachers. Question two will put millions into Maryland schools using revenue from sports betting. I know it won't solve every problem, but a yes vote will help our Maryland schools. The best team has a great sense of family. The best family has a great culture. 
And within that culture, there is great character. When you have all those elements come together, you've got a team. This fall, if you're looking for an adventure, find it in the new Honda, like the turbocharged Accord, the turbocharged all-wheel drive CRV, and the all-wheel drive HRV, with great features like second row magic seats. It's time to explore and say hello to the open road. Don't miss your chance to get a great deal on your favorite Honda model. When it comes to the best value, Honda leaves the others in the dust. See your local Honda dealer and start your adventure today. A relentless fighter both on and off the gridiron. Coach Juan Rivera is now facing the biggest battle of his life. Kind of big old Kevin, man. <laughs> yep. Can't picture Mickey. Oh my God, Mickey's in the middle. It was really cool to, to, to come out early and see the tribute. Um, you know, it was very poignant at one point because um, my brother that passed away, they had his picture in the um, in the collage. So that was uh, that was really cool. It really was. It meant a lot to me. And um, very, it was it was very poignant. Though, thank you, thank you guys. And to have a coach that's sitting right here, he's living. It. He's out here trying to get us right every week and making sure that he can do what he can do to get himself right personally. You have to have something extra in you every Sunday. Just wow, what a powerful moment in Washington and a powerful video for our, for our head coach. Wow. I think it just, everybody's touched by cancer. You know, I, I lost my mom two years ago to cancer. So just, just watching it and see how much he's, he's fighting through it. As a, as a team, you have to respect it. Like right. if you're in this locker room, that says no excuses, just keep going. Right. And I think he personifies that when it comes to that. It, it, when you go through life, you always gonna go through ups and downs, but it's not how you handle the ups, it's how you process and handle the downs. And I think he, he, he personifies that. Very well said, I mean, overcoming adversity, and wanting to play and fight for their head coach, Ron Rivera, and just what he's doing, being able to still be on those sidelines. That tribute was just so, so special, and I hope coach knows we all have his back and that we are all standing behind him. And now just going off of that, I mean, a lot of things happening in Washington. So another decision made by head coach, Ron Rivera. Yeah. So uh, people might have heard, Fred, there's yeah. been some changes at our quarterback position. Dwayne Haskins no longer the starter. Kyle Allen, a K, fellow K, Kelly yeah. Kyle, yeah. Yeah. right, is now the new quarterback uh, starting. So what do you think uh, the future holds for Haskins? Well, see, I'm, I'm, I'm raising kids myself, and sometimes you got to punish kids. When, when, when they don't do things the right way, it ain't that, like you punish for 20 years. I'm punishing you for a minute until you understand what you did right, until you understand what you did wrong. Yeah. So I seriously think they're doing this to see where he's at mentally. Can he mentally get past this? We've all been benched at one time. It had nothing to do with talent. Right. It has to do with something else and now I think this is a gut check and a mental check and I think he's up for the task. I like that because I think some are worried about his timing done in Washington. It sounds like you're saying not, not, not yet, right? Not yet. This is the, the slap on the wrist okay. that says we demand more. Okay. You can give us more but it's something you're missing yeah. and you need to go find out what that is and get better at it. I like that. Get better at it. And I think Haskins will. He's young. He's yeah. going to grow. Yeah. But I think on the other end of it, Fred, I'm going to challenge you a bit. So I'm yeah. saying, well, hey, Kelsey, Fred, there's some other young quarterbacks in the league who, who yeah. aren't doing so yeah. great, but they're not being benched. And, and I tell them, fans, Cassie and Fred going to tell you the truth. <laughs> at the end of the day, those other young quarterbacks have an a offensive line that's already been intact. They have a coach that's probably been there for years, years, and years. They have something established. This kid is actually coming off of a coaching staff that didn't want him last year with a new coaching staff and another new playbook in a new offensive line, no tight end. So it's so many variables that go into it. So I think this is more than just taking him out so he can learn. This is taking him out to protect him from himself somewhat. Mm, protecting you from yourself, probably one of the hardest things. things in the world. You, parents tell us that all the time. I'm going to protect you from yourself. You're like, no, nah, just let me go do it. <laughs> no, you have to do that sometimes. You do have to do that sometimes. And switching things uh, over, yeah. NBA Finals. Yeah. I'm sure you're watching that too, right? Because we were happy hey, basketball's back, right? Hey, hey listen, <laughs> I go, every team I go for yes. in baseball is the okay. Nets, right? All right. I, and, 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 in hockey, it's the Capitals. Like, I have taken on all Washington teams but except the Wizards. Oh, you know why? Because I've been walking down the road in D.C. I have never bumped into a real Wizard yet. 20 <laughs> years. Never bumped into a real Wizard. So, therefore, I'm a Lakers fan. And right now, <laughs> I feel good. LeBron James has done it again. 
I, I just feel good where we at right now. I mean, one more game, right? Just one more game to get at what LeBron's doing in LA is obviously super huge. But I'm like you, so I like the Wizards. Yeah. But can I have a second team? Because my yeah. second team is the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, see, my first team is the Lakers. All right, <laughs> let, let, let's just let's just make this complete. <laughs> my first team is the Lakers, and it all started with me with Kobe. I, yes. I, I, I was a super hyper Kobe fan, and I always picked players growing up. I didn't really pick teams. When I grew up in football, I was a Deion Sanders fan. So wherever Deion went, that's why I went. If Kobe would have left, I, I would have left the Lakers too. Yeah. That's what makes me a Laker. But you said where Dion went, so you're a fan of Jackson State now? <laughs> Listen, my, my, I'm from Jackson. Right. Jackson, Mississippi is right. where I'm from. My high school is walking distance from yeah. Jackson State. Yeah. So I basically went to Jackson State for four years going through high school. Yeah. I totally, I'm so excited for Mississippi right now. We have Dion and Jackson. Yeah. We have Mike Leach, the pirate at Mississippi State, and Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. If you can't do no media in Mississippi right now, you're not good at your job. <laughs> Drops mic, boom. That's all you need. That's all you need. Just exciting times. And since you touched on Kobe, yeah. we might as well head over to the WNBA Finals. Oh, Jewel yes. Lloyd, I thought, had a very powerful uh, quote after the game. She said mm -hmm. she dedicated that game to Kobe Bryant, yeah. the Gigi, uh, Gigi, of course, who also lost her life, and mm -hmm. the Bryant family. And I think, like you said, Kobe Bryant was one of all of our favorite players, right? Yeah. Fred? Like when you wanted mm -hmm. to make something, what was it? That Mamba mentality. Hey, that just you had. keep going. And he's he's done so much for the WNBA. Yeah. And shout out to Sue Bird because she just continues to be the LeBron yeah. of that and league. He's got another ring. And I'm gonna call everybody out in the DMV. Yeah. When are we gonna give our Mystics their parade? Yeah, I know it's a person. year late. I want that parade. <laughs> like we owe them that yes. parade. Yes, we definitely do, and we want that because what a championship that was that the Mystics yeah. got. First one, nothing uh, like that. First I, one, friend. We the district of champions right now. We yeah. got it rolling. Only if we can get the Washington football team to come on add into it. <laughs> I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Of course, congratulations to the Seattle Storm for winning the WNBA Finals. That's number four for them. Just uh, wow. A legacy. You talked about Sue Bird. I mean, yeah. GOAT status. GOAT status. Brandon Stewart, GOAT status. GOAT status. They continue to do things, but I must say, I, 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 Mystics team, they went all there this year. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to say I'm, I'm going to give them a little love. It was a little unfair for them, but you know what? We're rooting for them come next season. And going, we should stay with basketball, actually. Yeah. This debate always comes up, Fred. And I think we have a big enough age gap between us where I can ask you yeah. this question. Way to throw my age out I'm there. Sorry, but yes, I'm sorry, He's yeah. still young by heart, mm -hmm. right? Yes, Not I am. <laughs> I got Benjamin Bush disease, third degree. So I'm getting younger. It, it works. Yeah. All right, so that LeBron first MJ debate. I know you're a LeBron fan. Yeah. I'm sure you watched the last dance like the rest of yeah, us, right, when yeah. we were all in quarantine. Mm -hmm. who's, who's the real vote? All right, well, here we go. We asked him two different questions. Okay. LeBron has longevity over Jordan. LeBron has more, a little bit of, he's been in the playoffs more. Okay. He's, he, he entered the league younger. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. The most flashy, sellable thing in GOAT status is Michael Jordan, all right? Okay. But in his own way, he is also the GOAT. It's like Joe Montana and Tom Brady. Both are goats. No yep. goat is bigger than the other one. <laughs> so therefore, I, I, not, not quite equal footing. Right. MJ, nod over LeBron, but LeBron is, they are one A and one B. That's how I like it. I like that. Because it was a different time when MJ played, right? Yeah. A whole different game. And then mm -hmm. what LeBron is facing, of course, just a whole different game. But I want to ask you, if he wins this championship, what yeah. does this do for LeBron's legacy? I think this makes him one B. I think if he loses, finds a way to lose this, <laughs> He's always going to be number two. Okay. And LeBron don't want to be number two. I think 1A and 1B works for him. Yeah. And, and I actually, you know, I got to put Kobe at number three. So I, I just think it's a thing is, are you a prisoner of the moment? Because you can be a prisoner of this moment, or you could be a prisoner of the Bulls uh, dynasty. So I, I like to look through a clear lens and say, yeah, Mike here, LeBron here. Both great. Both great. And of course, LeBron has a great supporting cast. What Anthony Davis is doing this NBA Finals is just and, and, and evidently, being yeah. great in basketball yeah. means you have to lose your hair. <laughs> LeBron is it, and fighting a good fight right now. LeBron yeah, fighting a good fight. I was, hey, listen to me. I was eating a Reese's butter cup and I pulled it out the cup too quick. You know how to start yes, missing it. Yes. It looked just like LeBron James' hair, right there. Yeah, yeah, right. and missing the tail. I'm like, oh, is this LeBron head? I didn't know what was going on. That's how I knew we were gonna win last night. All right, so all the LBJ fans do not come from my mentions again. Fred has his own Twitter account. Please send those all his way. That was not initiated by me. And on that point, let's now go to our best social moments of the week. All right, we'd like to give a big shout out to Ryan Kerrigan and Jessica for welcoming their second daughter into the family. Congratulations. One thing, man, once you have daughters, they'll take care of you the rest of your life. Sons come up missing. It's true. <laughs>
<laughs> it's true, like, my dad's a girl dad, so hey, he knows that feeling. And then switching things over, McDonald's, one of our favorite places. New new meal, friend, the J yeah. Balvin meal. Yeah, yeah, you know what, Travis Scott meal kind of let me down. I wish I could make my own meal. It'll be off of coming to the America, McDowell's. I'll make the, the Big Mick instead of the Big Mac. You understand what I'm saying? I like that, I like that. <laughs> Let me, you know, I didn't even get a chance to try either one of those yet, but very exciting for that. And then also, Kevin Pierre-Louis making headlines, uh, talking about significant others and grocery shopping, Fred. What do you think about that? Well, I think he's a man that knows how to stay married, because evidently, as a divorcee, I didn't go to the grocery store when she asked me, did I want to go? Listen to him, man. Kevin knows what he's talking about. Happy wife, happy life. That's all it is. That's what it is. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of the life after this quick commercial break. <laughs> The best team has a great sense of family. The best family has a great culture. And within that culture, there is great character. When you have all those elements come together, you've got a team. COVID changed everything. More demands on students, parents, educators. But there was a $4 billion education shortfall in Maryland even before COVID. We have a lot to do for our kids. Close the digital divide, provide opportunities to pursue vocational and technical education, and hire more qualified teachers. Question two will put millions into Maryland schools using revenue from sports betting. I know it won't solve every problem, but a yes vote will help our Maryland schools. DC has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. DC's greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94.7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. It's 2020. Let's make a splash. Play the DC Lottery's Roaring Cash. I know this country needs change. I want the world to be a better place for my kids. I love my country. I'm voting because this is my first presidential election and my vote matters. My ancestors bled for this right. My voice, my vote matters. We are one team on and off the field. So let's do our part because we can't sit on the sideline. Our voice matters. Our lives matter. Our votes matter. Vote. 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 Get in the game. Get in the game. Get in the game. Because voting is how we call it was good, good trouble, trouble it was necessary, necessary trouble. trouble. So stop playing. Start voting. It was amazing to see the entire Washington football organization yeah. behind that video, Fred, especially I think for both of us as two black Americans who yeah. always didn't have the right to vote, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so important to vote, especially in this presidential election. So please get out and vote. Hey, most definitely get out and vote. Get out and vote because George Floyd can't vote. Get out and vote because Breonna Taylor can't vote. All right, it's up to us. It's up to all of us. It is. Our, our, vo our voices matter. Our votes matter. I think Dwayne Haskins said it best. So please, please, please go out and vote. It's so simple and easy to do. And it's necessary to make sure necessary. your voice is heard. Yes, yes, it is. Well said. All right. So it's now time for our Woman of Washington podcast presented by Fresh Vine Wine. <laughs> let's move on. Let's give some really quick um, WOW awards. Let's say well, who was best dressed? I'll start. Okay. <laughs> I was like, fine, I'll, I'll answer my own question. Um, I think I'm going to just keep, just give it, just gas pedaling um, AG, but 
he was wearing the Mighty Ducks jersey walking into the stadium with his Nike Grateful Dead, uh, SB Grateful Dead shoes. He just looked so cool. Like, you just definitely look like a cool rookie. So he was fun to watch walk in. I think yeah. Janine and I, we have the same, yes. we talked about this. It's the Rivera Strong shirts. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that was amazing. I think that moment of the coach's corner uh, was just so wonderful and touching for coach. So yeah, Rivera Strong shirts. That's my best dress. Make sure to download the Woman of Washington podcast wherever you find your podcasts. All right, it's now time to give our predictions for this upcoming Sunday's NFL game. Fred, who play the Los Angeles Rams, what's your prediction? Uh, it's time for us to hate on the return of McVay, the return of the prodigy child. I'm predicting right now that we beat them 23 to 17. Take that to your casino and smoke it. All right, take it to your casino, and if you lose, bill it to Fred Smith, not to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be a good game. You know, I think with all that's happening in Washington and the yeah. adversity, I also think we're going to get that win. Because that last loss was not that bad to a very good Baltimore Ravens. But you won't put no points on it. What points? What going to oh be the score? Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm going to do 20 to 17. Washington wins. Pretty close to my prediction. <laughs> I learned from the greats, Fred. I learned from the greats. That's all it is. Smooch the dumbest. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us on this special edition of The Life. I'm Kelsey Nicole Nelson. He's Mouth of the South, none other than Fred Smoot. We'll see you next week.